seems that Australia could well reverse its decline in manufacturing with an innovative new technology. That is, according to the US-based manufacturing expert, Terry Wallers. Uh, Mr. Wallers is in Australia as a guest of the CSIRO and Oz Industry, hosting a series of events around the country called Factory of the Future. Uh, he's with me and my guest host is our Simon Mariner from Allium. A warm welcome to you. Uh, let's just firstly just ponder what's brought about this mind shift. We're, we're talking, I guess, in the past about moulds, about you know, quite sizable um, outlays at the start to get a product in that manufacturing phase. Uh, what triggered a turnaround in that? Well, in the past, we've used uh, molds and dyes to manufacture, and that's really an enemy in manufacturing. A lot of lead time, uh, very expensive, and it, uh, a lot of risk associated with manufacturing with uh, tooling, molds and dyes. Now it's possible to use a, a new type of, of uh, a process called additive manufacturing where you're taking powders and liquids and even inkjet print heads and depositing parts layer by layer, which means that anything you can model on a computer, then you can manufacture, and you're not restricted by dialog conditions, getting parts out of molds, and it's impacting all kinds of industries, uh, aerospace, defense, uh, medical, uh, even consumer products, uh, video games now, taking characters and avatars out of them and, and building them up and, and building Cause we, beautiful. Because when you say building them out, let, let's look at some of these. You brought them in. Uh, this is intriguing. Walk me through that because to build something like that, you talk about powders and dyes and additives and inkjet heads and all the rest of it. I mean, it sounds, you know, getting your head around that into that finished product. If you zoom in on that, Josh, and just have a look at it because the finished product, something like that, how's that been built up with dyes and powders? Well, and no molds. Right, no molds or dyes. So you're start, starting out with a with a, a metal powder, in this, case, in this case it's a titanium powder, mm -hmm. and using either a laser or an electron beam and starting out with a thin layer of powder and then melting the powder and then spreading a second layer and just layer after layer. And so this goes into someone's hip. So when you go through the metal detector, you're going to really, um, I'll just turn that around for the purposes of seeing what it's looking like. That's actually going inside somebody. It's 100% dense on the inside, but the outside where it interfaces with the bone is very porous and it uh, better attaches to the bone. 12,000 of these have been manufactured in Europe, 7,000 implanted into patients uh, to date. All right. That, that, that is absolutely fascinating, as is this, because this looks to me like sort of a, what you might see on, on a uh, sort of a Rolls-Royce Boeing, you know, on a, on a jet engine. But in fact, what is that? That is used in the manufacturing process, but what is that? Look at that. Yeah, that's a, an impeller. It's a, an engine part that goes into a jet engine. And traditionally, you would cast that, machine it. It would take weeks, maybe even a couple of months to get to that point. Plus, you can do internal cavities. There's no geometric limitations here, so you can do very complex shape that would be uh, impossible to do in the past. So if they're hollow, they're, they're lighter and stronger? Uh, they can be lighter and stronger. Like in this case, uh, this is mostly air, uh, but very strong and rigid. And in this case, this will go into a much bigger version of this, would go into uh, an air uh, aircraft wing structure and then be coated with a carbon fiber composite. Because looking at that, in all fairness, that's, that's a bog standard shape, right? That's just sort of an off square, if you like. Well, why would that have been a messy mold in the first instance? Why did you... Why would there be a need to move away from that? Well, well, you couldn't mold this. If you hold it up to light, you see there's internal structures here, and mm -hmm. so it would be impossible to manufacture any, any other way because right. it's produced layer by layer. Okay. And in terms of a cost saving for companies, to sell this technology to the bones of this world, what are you charting and projecting is going to be a saving to the bottom line? Oh, it's enormous. It's absolutely, it's, well, uh, it's off the... Uh, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, right. Boeing's a big adopter, Rolls-Royce, uh, G uh, Research, uh, Pratt yep. & Whitney, uh, the list goes right. on. What about Australia? Because you're down under here selling this technology. What has been the response from, like, from the likes, I guess, Kim Carr, the innovation minister? You've been having dealings there. And uh, we've, how can uh, we use it? Well, now any, almost anyone anywhere can manufacture. Uh, you can then manufacture by uh, outsourcing to machines at various places like Formero, which is a, a company in this business. And so they can uh, uh, take these parts and manufacture them. But 
anyone almost anywhere working manufacturer. That's what's really exciting, even students out of their uh, college dormitory. And, and what does it mean for the sort of labor input for the, the manufacturing process? I mean, more technical, more highly skilled, uh, less numbers, quicker, um, you know, what, what are the, perhaps the, the labor market employment implications? For well, it? it's going to be a shift in employment. It um, uh, reduces labor, but it, it moves it up in terms of talent level. Uh, we're talking about uh, engineers that run uh, CAD system, computer-aided design systems, and it's a shift in workforce. But the opportunities are vast when you, when you consider the, the different industries and the applications within those industries. It could really mean a lot to Australia. How much opposition are you detecting here domestically with, when it comes to jobs? You think about the unions in the U.S. with some of these key industries like the auto industry who would not like to be hearing that this could mean further job shaving. You know, it's compelling uh, for, for, for the top-line growth, but uh, are, you, are you finding resistance here even in, in Australia when you try and sell this? No, the interest level has been enormous. We've, uh, we've met with almost 600 people this week. And, uh, the but how many of those are new orders? You know, meeting and interest does not equal new orders. Right. Well, I think once they understand the implications and the cost savings and, and what's possible now, mm -hmm. uh, my belief is that the, the adoption will, will become rapid here in Australia. And I mean, is there one sector you reckon that could really shine from this? Well, aerospace certainly has been uh, an early adopter. Right. Uh, medicine as well okay. will be uh, a big one. Uh, medical device instruments, mm -hmm. uh, the gaming industry, consumer products, uh, those are the, the ones that uh, will be impacted first. Terry, uh, intriguing. Uh, we haven't necessarily seen the likes of this before, so thanks so much for coming in and shitting oh, some water. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your stay. Oh, thank you. U.S. expert Terry Roll is there, and of course, uh, the, you see a final look at it. And uh, Simon Mariner from Allium, it's been great having you with us this hour. As always, we'll look forward to your company. You're not getting on a jet plane, I don't think, in the, in the short term at least. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.